Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Normally I review law books, but it's always nice to review other books to go with the main um, titles that I cover. This one was particularly relevant to me because it's about Kathmandu or Kathmandu, depending on how you want to pronounce it. It's been written by Thomas Bell uh, from House Publishing Limited. And they contacted me about this book and I thought it was such an interesting book, having seen some of the uh, comments about it, that I thought I would review it. And Elizabeth and I talked about the book in some detail and I gave it the title, uh, Top of the World to you, Mr Bell, on your special journey. An excellent travel book from house to a land most of us will never visit. I certainly won't be visiting it, alas, too old and it's a long way away and I like to watch uh, the programmes about it on television. I've also done a little bit of visiting of um, the Alps, uh, Matterhorn and so forth, so I've got some idea of a very small version of, of what this particular region of the world is like, but I've got really no idea at all. So the book makes up for it in some detail. This is actually the book itself. There's actually the uh, front cover there. And it's, um, it's, that's the spine, and in addition to that, that's the back of the book. Then you've got uh, a dust cover. You've got some information about Mr Bell, um, who is born in the north of England, studied at Oxford at the Courtauld Industry, uh, Institute of Art. And he moved to Kathmandu to cover the Civil War in Nepal for the Daily Telegraph. Um, he actually lives uh, with his family um, in Kathmandu at the moment. There is the um, inside dust jacket there. Uh, that actually explains a little bit about the book. And then at the back, let me just go to the back first of all. The book runs to 500 pages. In fact, the last page is page 500. You can see the, the actual size of the type is, is a little bit small, but you can see the index at the back. It's page numbering. Uh, there's a, a very detailed index, and what I did like, apart from the fact that there's the index itself, you've got a very detailed, um, you've got an acknowledgements right at the back as well, you've got a very detailed section of bibliography. This is a huge work undertaken by Thomas Bell, and I think it's a first-class book. There is the first page, then you've got uh, the uh, actual cover. It was first published in... Um, Let's see. Um, first published uh, 2016. There is the dedication, to uh, which I always like to point out. Then you've got, uh, quote, the past is never dead. It's not even passed by William Faulkner. Well, there we are. Part one, you can see the structure of the book there. And then you've got a lot of detail all the way through. A lot of information about what's been going on. A lot of the links that we've got with, with that part of the world. Um, it runs through to 24 um, chapters in total. Then there's an epilogue, notes, bibliography. Then there are all the photographs and illustrations. I'm not going to go through them in a lot of detail because I can't in this short review. You've got a very useful preface which is uh, right at the beginning. And then you've got some photographs. I'll show you some of them there. And then it runs through. There's, there's a, that's a particularly good one, I think. And then what you do is you can see in the middle of the book, you can see the sort of um, glossary of, of illustrations. So say 500 pages, a very interesting book, one that I found particularly um, interesting to read and one that I did really want to review. So what do we say about it? Well, some years ago I <clears throat> met a man on a train once and he almost got to the top of Everest. It's the big man with a bold and very well-known, um, actually very well-known person to the public because of his booming voice and some quite serious acting parts. But he was what I describe as touched by Everest and the surrounding area, the whole of the area. And an interesting man, still around, um, would always affect him, I think is the basic view. I was listening to some conversation he had and I could see it, it clearly had profoundly affected him the visit to the region. It became apparent quickly that the area had, had held and was, will always hold for him and many others that special mystical quality and beauty which the world saw so recently when the area was devastated by disaster. Kathmandu, this is a special travel book, 
about a special place and it's been lovingly researched by Thomas Bell. And it's a terrific read and something I certainly, anybody who's interested in this area, irrespective of whether you go there or whatever, I'm sure you will find the book well worth uh, reading. As one of the greatest cities in the Himalaya, Kathmandu, Nepal, has rightly been described, and I'm going to quote some of the information from the book, as a unique blend of a thousand-year-old cultural practices and accelerated urban development. And I'm afraid you're getting that with a lot of areas, not just Kathmandu. House publishing have done us proud, in my, in my view, as uh, travel book readers, with such a de detailed account of the area, and, and they maintain their lead as excellent specialist publishers for this genre. Now, Thomas Bell, as the author of Kathmandu, is an expert on Asia, as I've indicated. He's, he's an experienced journalist, and he brought much detail and expertise to this title. He describes his um, experiences vividly from his many years in the city, exploring the process, in the process, the rich history of uh, the city. And as he says, it's many instances of self-reinvention. Rightly, of course, um, politics is never very far away because the area was closed to the outside world until 1951. It was literally trapped in a medieval time warp, and I'm afraid that is the case with parts of the globe even today. The area is described in the book as a jewel of the art world, a carnival of sexual license, a hotbed of communist revolution, a paradigm of failed democracy, a case study in bungled Western intervention, and an environmental catastrophe. Well, you've got an awful lot of mix there, haven't you? And in these compelling words of Bell, there is some excitement for here. And then again, of course, it's a great read. And you do have such a wide range of, of different things happening. And it's just, not just Kathmandu, it's a whole range of other areas where you've got similar problems. And as the world matures, and we all get to talk to each other as, as, as we become much more global, um, these places do open up and they do change because other other pressures and other influences come to, to bear on what they do. Whether they're good or bad is actually not something I can comment upon. What I can do is identify as a watcher um, where we actually are with this. So Bell describes Kathmandu with an imagery which can never be considered a purple patch in my view. He's writing about a place using phrases such as where the layered development of the city can be seen in the successive generations of its gods and goddesses, with its comfort in the caste system and the ethos of aristocracy and kingship, the recent destabilizing effects of consumerist approaches and the push for egalitarianism and democracy. As I've said before, I'm not here to comment on that, but I, to observe, and that's really what he's doing here too. Of course, there are always major problems encountered when places like Kathmandu, with all its history, are opened up to the world, and what we call sometimes, ironically, is progress. Although Bell's book is a most informative contemporary statement, in my opinion, which will be compulsory reading for the potential visitor. It's certainly, if you're going there, you want to read the book first. In important ways, and do your homework, by the way, when you do that, because important ways, Kathmandu's quick modernisation may well be an extreme version of what has happened to other traditional societies, with all the benefits and damages that go with it. Bell also, of course, discovers the ramifications of the recent Nepal earthquake uh, for contemporary detail. And I think that does help try to explain what has been happening more recently. I'd like to conclude by saying it's a lovely, beautifully researched and presented book. Thank you, House, for doing so. And it most certainly gives us a comprehensive look at uh, a top global destination, which is what it's going to be, of course. For that is what Kathmandu is. And it's an entertaining and accessible chronicle, as described, for anyone eager to learn more about the fascinating city. Uh, we certainly did when we read the book, Elizabeth and I did. Um, the publication date stated at 2016, and I'm recording this at the beginning of 2017, as a lot of changes are taking place. There's the book again, and just opening it in the middle. Um, the Revolutions, you see, we have to go into that. I think it's very important. I mean, I have visited a large number of places uh, around the world, and it's always important to... Yeah, this is continuing your evolutions. It's always important to read books to get an idea of where you're going. 
so you've got some idea of what the place is like and what the problems are. Um, certainly the author brings a lot of personal reminiscence to uh, what he says about the city uh, and I think we are all the better for it and I'd like to thank everybody involved in this book. Uh, it's a special book for me uh, because I'll never go there uh, but I've always been fascinated by what I've seen uh, but I'm not under the spell of it the way perhaps um, that dear man I talked about at the beginning with the booming voice certainly has as a, as a special place for him. Uh, but the book's a special place for me too. So thank you to all concerned. Bye-bye.